this is for the entrepreneurs like kunebuni company would grow or there there is a stage where you need um, uh, you need extra capital or raise funds or stuff like that right now it's not just about raising fund but being in a state where your company is investment ready because that sets out a marker jahan se a company is now it's stable one kuraru what do you think are the markers that defines a company where it is once an investment ready and attractive for investors see firstly i am it's my personal opinion right firstly i think you hear about the successes of facebook google let's say the startups that started from the garage and came up you know you don't hear about the failures of the other thousand companies okay? right so we are in this thing that startup banda sad i'm going to i'm going to you know change the world yes you could but people get too desperate too fast to grow okay number one number two is that uh, you know the key thing for any startup to work apart from having a idea that that matches with the people around you is having the right people around you is knowing that my strength is sales and marketing i need the best guy for finance and accounts i need the best guy for manufacturing like my inner do share the same goal that's the kind of thing that is missing a lot you know the entrepreneur feels i can do everything right so then what happens is when you're going to the investors the investors have a lock in i'm only going to invest if you are doing only you are stuck for 5 years then it closes your doors for doing anything else but if you come in as a team with each and everyone's strengths then you are basically developing an institution okay you're build, developing a system then no matter who comes there tomorrow the company is going to go into its own trajectory right so my take has always been that instead of having a owning a big piece of a small cake get this mindset out and don't worry about owning a smaller piece of a very big cake you know get in the right people who whose values are there if you feel that today i do not have the right equity and all of that get in like minded people to become partners and put in equity with you you know just because you started a business one year and you see it going to a bank and taking loan is the easiest bit right get talking to a private equity or venture capital fund is the second bit to it but in your startup phase the series a second year of operations i mean the peas and the venture capitalists are sharks they will eat you up they will in good times you know give you the cash but in bad time they will make your life a living hell bad time so what i'm trying to tell you what i'm trying what i want to tell the youth is don't be too desperate to start saying i want to be the next facebook or the next google first step try and get experience in other companies at their cost see how a company functions see how finance is run see how different aspects of a company is run once you've learned from other people's investments and mistakes then first step is to bring together a right minded founders knowing what each and every one's strengths are that's what jack ma did in alibaba that's what steve jobs did in apple that's what microsoft did uh, bill gates did in microsoft you name a company there's always been people who've come in together or you should have the ability to bring in the right person and have that cash flow to be able to afford that right think big start small be frugal the problem i see is someone comes in with a startup as a brilliant idea next thing i know he's driving a fancy car or has mm. a fancy office mm. don't be drawn in by that you'll start making wrong decisions stick to the ethos of your plan grow there are enough companies who will queue up to be a part of your company because everyone's looking at the market okay today e seva for example i mean you got 10 people wanting to take a stake on it did they go to somewhere perhaps one or two people for initial seed capital do they need to go do they need to raise funds yes are they going anywhere no people are coming to them because people have understood they have a credible track record they built a team over a period of time and they know where to take the company have patience you know nepal ko 
you same same formula same thing ma no nepal ko entrepreneur ecosystem do you think like people are too um, in a hurry to raise capital you know i feel that uh, one big mistake majority of the people are making is that we are looking at nepal as our market ki so tapaile jati je gare pani nepal is your market correct so even if i open up a e-commerce innovative company how much can i really grow to in this in nepal market in a competitive landscape but if my strategic angle is amazon's not in nepal mm-hmm. okay five years i'll build this company and build in a fabulous set of uh, customer base i'll do fabulous number of revenue but my cash flow and my profitability will be vain it'll be nothing i'll just sustain the company strategically i want to go to amazon because for amazon nepal is too small but sooner or later amazon will come here so amazon is just, amazon is just going to come to my company and say boss how much is your company worth and that's the time i play the valuation game hmm. because for amazon it's easier to acquire a company than to right. come and set up shop so that's an advantage and a strategic input i don't think we are we are building into our into our goals and our vision game you know like i i talk to a lot of entrepreneurs fabulous ideas great ideas okay great ideas but what then so you know there was this gentleman who had come up with this app called gully app and mm-hmm. have you heard of him no no so young guy you know he was part of our nabil school of social entrepreneurship and we were incubating and training people and he's like that i've got these 3D cameras and I'm going gully gully ma and I'm trying to integrate it and create my own maps because bully mm-hmm. anyone wants to deliver foods they need to now log on to my map and they know exactly kun se ghar ho kun se because our streets our city streets are not named properly houses are not numbered properly and I thought that was a brilliant idea and he's like I asked him but how how do you think you're going to monetize it he said very simple thing I'm going to give it to the delivery company logistics company I'm going to give it to postal company and tomorrow if google wants to you know come in depth into nepal i'm the only one they can buy now that is someone who's going to be building a big company which is a very relative term if i by the way there are a lot of local companies who are doing well all of that but from my perspective that you know today's day and age you know we're all living in a boundaryless world okay the world is your market it's that it's that state of mind and that that your own inherent perception and the way you're looking at things you know there's this guy who was wanted to sell shoes okay in this small village and he sent two of his sales guys and one of them came back saying that sir no one wears shoes here we're wasting mm-hmm. our time and the other one was so excited going my boss no one wears shoes here just imagine what all we can sell so i guess attitude is key state of mind is key Like you know, I've been in Nepal for the last twenty-four years now, twenty-three years. I could be living anywhere. The potential I see in our country, the beauty I see in our country, the people I meet, just falling more and more in love with this country every day. And I'm proud of being a Nepali. You know, 